Hey guys, it's Jess from Stark Skincare. Welcome back to my channel, or welcome to my channel. Um, I am the formulator and CEO and blah 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 blah, pretty much everything at a very small skincare brand called Stark Skincare. Um, sometimes people forget how small my company is, but yes, I am a one-woman army of skincare. So behind me is my new llama. My husband doesn't like him, so he will be appearing in many videos now. His name is <laughs> That's what my son and I named him. It's just the sound. <laughs> um, I wish my name was not a Metapia. It is boiling hot today. It's insanely humid, so my hair is up in a pineapple, which is curly girl parlance for um, a high ponytail or a high bun, but uh, my hair short, so it's in a little pineapple ponytail. Um, it's 42 degrees with the humidex um, Celsius, and I don't know what that is in Fahrenheit. It's like a hundred and something. Um, so I've been asked why, or like, just like, what's up with keto for me? Um, am I still doing it? Uh, just for an update on that by um, a few people now. So. Spoiler alert, I quit keto. And I quit, I think it was in May or June. When did I quit, Adri? I don't remember. We don't remember. I had gone a good six months, so I guess it was June. In April, I did falter because I went on two trips. I went to Jamaica and I went to Halifax, and both times while I was traveling, I didn't really bother with trying to keep up with keto. Um, you know, I was drinking alcohol, I was eating fruit, uh, I was eating pastries, um, that kind of thing. So I didn't really stick with it, I mean, at all, <laughs> while I was traveling. And um, when I came back from my trips, uh, I tried to get back into it, but was having a hard time readjusting and was getting like the keto flu and it was sort of, it really felt like starting over and it didn't feel very good. And then right at the end, so I guess like in late May, um, my hormones definitely did something really weird. So just to backtrack, whenever I started keto, um, it was amazing. It was like, I felt like I was on drugs or something like in a really in a good way like I had found you know some kind of medication that just put me in a good mood all the time and that um, just took away all of my anxiety and gave me a ton of energy and I would just like spring out of bed and you know I'd go on long walks and just I, I was full of energy it was amazing um, Looking back, I wonder though sometimes like where that energy came from. Was it just cutting out carbs or was it actually a hormonal response to my body changing metabolism states and was it maybe actually um, cortisol or adrenaline being released into my system that was giving me that boost of energy? I'm not sure. Sort of on an intuitive level, that's what I feel may have actually been happening to me. Um, but then also cutting down on caffeine, cutting out the sugar, um, and not eating starchy food. I think that just also, it did make me feel good. So it could be both things. It could have been like a dash of, you know, these, these hormones surging through my body, um, in a little, in a mini crisis mode. Um, you know, cause your body interprets going into ketosis as similar to going into starvation mode. So maybe my body was like, whoa, we're starving, yee! Like, let's get lots of energy so we can go out and hunt or, you know, forage for food or, or you know, run down to the grocery store. Or maybe, um, you know, but it could have also been just a positive response to not being full of gummy bears and wine. Doors are slamming in here. So that was the beginning and it felt great. I was so energized with it and I was also introducing all kinds of new healthy hacks. I was drinking a lot of water, not too much, but I was definitely drinking, hydrating your, myself, um, possibly for the first time in you know a good chunk of time because I feel like unless we go on like a big hydration like 
you know, new life protocol, then sometimes we can just really wane in that area. Um, and I definitely, you know, picked it up again, especially for the winter. Like I find living in such a cold climate, I forget to drink enough water in the dead of winter. And I'd started keto back in January and it was a very, very, very cold winter. So um, I could have been very dehydrated without realizing. So I was drinking lots of water. I was having keto lemonade, which means I was replenishing electrolytes um, and getting enough magnesium and potassium and most people are probably deficient in electrolytes such as magnesium and a lot of minerals so I think maybe my body felt really good just having more um, particularly magnesium like my mom is very deficient in magnesium and I believe that I am I may be as well because of just the way that my body um, reacts to it whenever I do have it in my system I feel like it needs to be part of this conversation um, what else was I doing? Oh, like the bulletproof coffees. I that was um, something I had been doing for a while, but then I started also putting collagen in it, and I believe that that you know, just having that combination of the caffeine, the fat, and the protein and collagen, um, you know, as gross as kind of like the source of it is, um, it's a very clean, pure source of protein that I believe that the human body metabolizes very easily, and so. Um, because I have trouble with anxiety and just sort of like f just feeling like a nervous jittery person often um, too much coffee is really bad for me I need it though I need my caffeine but having it with the fat and the protein I think just really helped to um, help like just make my body metabolize it slower and therefore it wasn't such a big punch in the face of caffeine and it was just like more of a slow trickle with other things in my body to kind of help with the absorption because I tend not to um, have much of a breakfast. So that was a few of the changes that I had made as well as I guess just actually tracking macros um, although that did backfire on me the first time that I tried I wasn't getting enough protein and I made myself puke. <laughs> So I think that there's just a lot of variables that came with the beginning of my keto experience. And so I can't nail, you know, how I felt in the beginning and then how I progressed to feel completely on keto. And it could have, you know, it could have been just such a big range of factors. So first little while was a total success. I was like the biggest advocate for the keto diet and lifestyle and um, I felt really great. And just having the constraints around what I could or couldn't eat and how I could or couldn't cook was actually really motivating to me. And I found that um, having those constraints made me more creative in the kitchen. So that was kind of fun at first because I was sort of waning with like knowing what to prepare for dinner and stuff like that and um, I like whenever I get into something I just really like go into this like rabbit hole and I become obsessed and I do a ton of research and I just become 100% about that thing for a period of time. So. That's been me with the curly girl method um, recently, and so I feel like, yeah, so what I do is I just really like tunnel vision into something, become obsessed, really like integrate it into my life, and then, you know, after several months decide whether or not that it's something that um, I can continue doing, you know, in a way that is sustainable for me and for my life. Um, and then I sort of tone it down and I just integrate it in a way that just makes sense so that I can become obsessed with a new thing. So with keto, you know, first few months, super obsessed. I was like the walking, you know, Wikipedia entry of keto. Like I, I knew everything about it. I felt like I knew a lot about it. Um, I would constantly consume um, media on it, books, everything, and I just loved it and my cousin was doing it too and my husband was doing it so it was like a little I had a little keto community around me and it was really really great um, so yeah around the springtime I started not feeling so great and my anxiety came back like full-blown um, I was having panic attacks I was just really like, depressed I was really unhappy I felt terrible um, I had stopped losing weight because I did initially lose a little bit of weight with keto, although I don't have a ton of weight to lose. Um, I'll go back to who I think keto is probably best for. Um, I was just feeling really, really crummy. Um, and 
intuitively, like, I knew I wasn't sick, um, I just didn't feel right, and then I didn't get my period for, like, two or three weeks. Like, it was super late, and I'm never late, like, I'm maybe three days max. Um, so that was really, really freaky. I took, like, three or four pregnancy tests, which doesn't make any sense, but I know that any woman who's been in that position where you, you either really want to get pregnant or you really don't want to get pregnant, um, just taking, like, more than one test just to make sure, like, it's just, it doesn't make sense, but anyways, that's what I did. Um, and wasn't pregnant and just waited and waited for my period and um, I was freaking out and I felt really crummy and I was not interested in food anymore. I totally lost my appetite. I was completely turned off of all the keto food. I didn't feel motivated by it. Um, I was craving fruit. I was just wanting to have a simple meal, like my comfort food that I make, which has always been stuff like um, a chicken chicken rice and vegetable soup was something that I really liked previously um, couldn't have that anymore or just like a veggie lentil soup um, I missed grains I miss quinoa bowls rice bowls um, just having like a simple wrap and like an actual flatbread um, eating yeah just eating fruit eating having a treat, like eating gummy bears, and like, I mean, I would sometimes, you know, treat myself or do a carb up, but it felt so OCD in a way that really didn't feel good anymore. And like, I've had some eating disorders in my past, my 20s and stuff, where, you know, I would be like, well, I can have this if I do this or don't do this, and this or this, that and that. Just really not a healthy, mentality or just a way of thinking about food and like nourishing your body and stuff like that so yeah, I was getting into that um, that kind of line of thinking and that was like a pretty big red flag for me that just didn't feel like this could go on and then plus not getting my period and feeling crummy and intuitively just knowing that keto wasn't right for me anymore. And I, I do suspect that when I was traveling and I went off of keto like pretty hard, um, that that really, really messed up the whole balance. But then I was like, do I really want to have a diet that's so restrictive that going on vacation is gonna completely mess me up for weeks, maybe months, I don't know. And that is basically impossible to follow. You know, I was in like an all-inclusive resort in Jamaica. Um, even then, like, as if I'm not going to eat tropical fruit when you're in a tropical country, as if I'm not going to have a few glasses of champagne when the champagne is free and, like, delicious, as if I'm not going to have, like, a Bob Marley slushy, you guys, you know? Like, as if I'm not going to eat jerk chicken, like, and, and the, the buns and the, th you know, like, all the things. Like, I, I wasn't going to restrict my experience of, of travel and, or, you know, going out with friends and stuff like that. Um, for this diet and then plus going over to people's houses like whenever I'd go to my mom's um because you know my mom's still well enough to cook for us and stuff like that which is really great and you know she tried so hard with the keto thing she's like what the fuck can you eat <laughs> so like it got really you know it was just like it just I feel like my family were supportive they were really good sports about it but um it just got really difficult for everyone and just started feeling like so ugh, like <sighs> I was just like, oh god, is it time to eat again? Ugh, you know, they just took all the joy out of eating for me. Um, and then, so whenever I didn't get my period, um, I was just like, screw this. I'm gonna go have a bowl of rice. And we went to a Moroccan restaurant and had this like amazing tagine. And I felt goosebumps all over my body. It was the craziest thing. First of all, it was the most delicious thing that I'd eaten in several weeks at that point. So, you know, if this was in, I guess, early June, um, I hadn't maybe had something super delicious since, like, April um, from, like, my, my trips. So I got goosebumps everywhere and my tongue, like, I was, my mouth was watering like crazy and I would just inhaled the food and I wasn't even particularly that hungry 
but clearly I was starving for something. There was, you know, some nutrients that my body really craved, really wanted, and um, I just really enjoyed that tagine. <laughs> As I'm eating, I could feel like my ovaries doing something. I kid you not, it was like, it was like the little like factory started working again. I was like, had like really light cramps. I was like, huh, lower back was hurting. I'm like, okay, that's interesting. Next day I got my period. I'm like, that was for sure connected. There you go. Um, ever since that experience, I haven't gone back to keto. I think that it's a really powerful diet. I think it's a really hardcore lifestyle. You really need to commit to it as being a lifestyle. And I think that just like where my health is at and stuff like that, I don't need something so powerful. Um, I don't regret doing it at all. And it's still been a very helpful tool for my husband who, um, he does have some kind of issue with carbohydrates. He can't, he's like really insulin sensitive or resistant or we're not sure exactly, um, you know, what's, what's, ooh, FedEx ground, is that for me? He hasn't been diagnosed with anything, but he definitely has a sensitivity, it's obvious. Um, so it's been a really good tool for him and I do plan on using keto as um, or something close to keto, like maybe Whole Foods 30 or something like that, just to do occasional cleanses. Um, but like I said, I don't, I don't feel like I particularly need to do something so drastic. Um, I think it's an extremely healing diet. I think that um, anyone who is um, obese, anyone who is diabetic or pre-diabetic, um, there's been studies around cancer and keto. Uh, I definitely think that. If you can do keto in a really healthy way, that that is a healthy thing to try. However, you know, my mom having stage four cancer, I also know that having a really restrictive diet when someone doesn't have much of an appetite to begin with, like you got to weigh out like your pros and cons there. So maybe like in a stage one kind or two sort of situation um, where there really is more of a chance to drastically heal the body. I think that keto can be extremely powerful. I do think that it should be um, under the supervision of a nutritionist, under a doctor, someone who really, really can monitor your health and all of your vital stats to make sure you're doing it okay. Um, do all of your research, do not take it lightly, don't just be kind of keto, like, oh, I'm doing the keto diet without really knowing what you get into. Um, a couple of my friends have been like, oh, I'm trying out keto, but then, you know, we'll have a glass of beer and then we'll have this, and it's like, oh, being sort of in between keto and not keto feels like garbage, so it's like you gotta do it or you don't, kind of thing. Um, and I think that now that I know that my body can get into ketosis quite easily. I will try occasionally to do it as just a little, keeping my body on its toes, a um, little bit of a cleanse, that kind of thing. So if you are thinking about it, I do think that it's a great experiment. Um, if you're into like a little bit of biohacking, it's interesting to see your body in a new metabolic state and um, how you feel and what changes in your body. If you've got like, like seriously some some weight to lose I think it's a really really great tool um, but just do your research be serious about it and um, you know once if you don't feel okay anymore it's okay to quit it's not a failure I've learned a lot from keto um, and yeah I'm just back to eating sort of like normal now I'm mostly vegetarian, but not really. I will have chicken and fish and stuff like that. Um, super rarely red meat. I'm just sort of a flexitarian, just, you know, taking it easy, eating kind of whatever, not have consuming too much alcohol, trying to watch my sugar. But damn those gummy bears, you guys. What 36 year old is obsessed with gummy bears? People think I'm joking, okay? And then, like, some gummy bears. I'm like, errant gummy bears fall out of my purse. Like, it's a problem. <laughs> but it's okay. I'll get it under control. It's all good. I got this guy supporting me. Meh. Uh, and yeah, that's, that's where I'm at with keto. So um, let me know. Have you tried it? Have you failed? Have you succeeded? Are you on it now? How's it going? Questions about anything else? Come and, come and give them to me. Um, okay, so I'll see you next week. Bye!